Hello everyone, welcome back to Lovely Lavender Wishes. It's Renee. I hope you're having a very blessed day today. So today we are going to be in Axe. Um, I'm doing a fall page. I've been wanting to do something like this for a while. So we're going to do it today um, before the holidays. <laughs> I've been in the fall mood. I've told you all this. Um, so today in Acts, we're going to focus on chapter 14. So let me read um, verses 8 through 18 real quick so you can kind of get the background and why I foc I'm focusing on this scripture. So now at Lystra, or Lystra, there was a man sitting who could not use his feet. He was crippled from birth and had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, and Paul, looking intently at him and seeing that he had faith to be made well, said in a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began walking. Wow, y'all. And when the crowd saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Lyconian, the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. So they're saying this wasn't the God. They're saying the gods came down to us in the form of men. And Paul was like a god, okay? Barnabas, they called Zeus, and Paul, Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. So they were saying Barnabas was their god Zeus, and they were calling Paul Hermes. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the crowds. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out into the crowd, crying out, Men, why are you doing these things? We also are men of like nature with you, and we bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. So Paul and Barnabas got really upset that these people were kind of worshiping them as gods. And they were saying, hey, we are not gods. We're humans just like you. And it's not us who did this miracle. It's the living God. So he's saying, turn from these dead gods and look towards the living God, okay? So he's saying he, he's the God who made the heaven and the earth and sea and all that's in them. In past generations, he allowed all nations to walk in their own ways. Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. <clears throat> so God is the one who gives us all good things. He gives us the rains from heavens, fruitful seasons. He satisfies our hearts with food and gladness. And I'm taking this part right here for the Thanksgiving season um, where we can thank God for all the blessings he's given us. And since I wanted to do a fall page, I'm thinking about like the changing of the seasons and how though the seasons change, God never changes and how he gives us the plentiful harvest. And this is like the harvest season. Autumn is like the harvest season. So um, th that's kind of where I'm pulling my idea from, from this fall page, from these verses right here. But the sad thing is, is even with these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifices to them. So the people still wouldn't listen to them, how they weren't gods and they were offering sacrifices to their gods. And I found that kind of sad, but I think we do the same thing in our lives. So this page is going to be called Fall for Jesus, Fall, you know, for Autumn. Ha <laughs> ha, you know, you've seen these pages before with the leaves. Um, but the reason why I'm saying for that is instead of falling for these other gods or other idols in our lives, let's make sure we're falling for the true God, falling for Jesus, falling for the living God, um, and not getting swept away or sidetracked by all these other gods and idols and things that we th think or put of importance in our life above God. So this page is a reminder for me as well to, you know, make sure that I have God as my prior priority and not other things in my life. So there we go, y'all. So let's get, let's get cracking. <laughs> let's get crafting. So I am using this printable. This is, I, I don't remember the title of this one, but this is from his palette. Um, and I just printed two different sizes. I'm gonna put one here and one here. Um, I'm gonna tie in this page. So let me put that to the side. Right now I'm going to be using um, my little glass piece here and two Neo Color crayons because there's pink and blue in these pictures. So I am going to color um, some pink on here and let's see if this will work. I'm gonna do some water. And then I am gonna, we're gonna use the smooshing technique and the splatter technique. So I'm going to, whoa, well, there we go. Got some on my paper already. Hey, 
<laughs> but that's perfect. That's what I wanted. So there we go. We're just going to swoosh these pinks because I'm drawing from the picture I have. I always do that. Um, I draw the colors from my printables. And then I'm going to carry this over. Let me move these because I know I'm going to make a mess. I'm going to carry this over a little bit onto this page. Just in some areas. Not a lot. Oh, so cute. Again, just, I mean, it's just such a little thing, but yet it can make such a big impression on the page already. So I'm going to move that. Okay, let's move that to the side. That's all I really wanted to do with the smooshing technique. And then let's dry that really quick, <clears throat> at least a little bit. And then I'm going to splatter a little. Because we're going to do some, we're going to do lots of different layers on this page. So I don't want to overwhelm the page with the thing. I did just sew my page. Um, <clears throat> Briefly, or you know, I swiped around it with a paper towel like I always do. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice, y'all. Sorry, I am fighting a little cold, of course, right before I need to travel and get on a plane. And then I'll probably get more, more junk from the plane. Every time I travel, I seem to pick up something when I go on a plane, but I don't want to speak that. So <laughs> I will be healthy in Jesus' name. I will get rid of this cold and not get anything else, any other crud as I go along. Okay, and now I'm gonna take this brush and I have um, some water right here. I always have like a little cup of water nearby and paper towels, always paper towels, y'all. Um, fold this a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get this one started. So this, hang on, only got two hands. <laughs> um, this is Neocolor Water Soluble Crayons. I've got two packages of these. I've got, I think, a 10-piece? It's either an 8-piece or a 10-piece, and then this 15-piece. Um, they're water-soluble wax pastels, but they the pigment in these are just incredible. So I love using these for splatters and such because um, they really give you some good color. And I always put, see, look at that. I mean, that's just from now. Let's see. There we go. There we go. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I want some big splatters and some little splatters. And we're just going to do a few. Uh, let's see. Let's do a little bit on this side. The more water you put, the bigger splatters you'll get. See? Let's put some up here. Let's see down there. Just a little bit. There we go. That is it. Again, we're going to be doing a lot of layers. So I don't want to add so much that it's gonna overwhelm. Okay, let me dry that briefly. So that's gonna pull in the blue from the principal and the pink. And now we're gonna grab some leaves. I went outside and I just picked a couple leaves from a couple of my bushes. We're gonna paint leaves and press them on the page. Um, but what I'm going to do first, so I'm gonna move this over so you can still see, but I'm going to grab a scratch paper and I'm gonna grab my palette um, piece. And what I did is I just grabbed a Fiesta, well this is patio paint, outdoor patio paint. I didn't even know what I grabbed. It was a yellow, so that's this yellow. Um, this is acrylic paint. This is burnt umber, this one. And then this is tapestry wine. Again, um, I think this is acrylic paint, craft paint. Um, that's that color. And then I grabbed this one, which is a spiced pumpkin acrylic paint. And that's this one right here, this orange one. So I'm just going, and then I grabbed some leaves, different sizes different kinds. I didn't have any oak leaves around here, but I had these. So we are going to try this. <laughs> we shall see y'all. Okay, so I'm going to get most of the water out of my brush because I want to dry brush these um, um, leaves. 
So my brush is dry and I'm just gonna go in and see, just dry brushes. You don't want a lot of liquid on these because you want the paint, you don't want the paint to clump up. Um, I don't mind mixing the colors here because I want a lot of the different colors to shine through. And then let's do a little bit more yellow on some of the edges and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to put my brush here. And the first, I just wanna practice. So I'm gonna push this down, tap it down, push it down onto the page and see how it's getting a little clumpy. So your second one is usually better. I want just like a faded type picture. Okay, so that was just like my practice. So now I'm gonna try again. Just add a little bit more. All the different colors. You can paint over each other. Okay, now, now we're gonna go on to the paper. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, and I'm just gonna lightly tap it because this was my first layer of paint and I don't want it to be too clumpy. I just want, oh, well that barely did it. So I'm gonna try it again. Now I'm gonna press a little harder. If you have a brayer, you could, you know, roll it over, but I kind of just like using my fingers. There we go, look at that. And then you might wanna do a couple different runs, like do your second press. Look at that. I'm gonna try another one. I think I have enough paint on here to even give me another little, look at that. Ooh, I love it. Love it. Okay, I'm gonna do a couple on the other side of the page too. So since I have this leaf, I'm gonna do some more. So just go in and play with it. And you're gonna get a different um, image every time because you know, your colors are gonna mesh differently and I'm gonna press this one a little bit right here because I think I had a little too much paint. Yeah, see, I'm gonna get that off. Now I'm gonna come to this side. Let me see if I can move this over without making a mess, y'all. And I'm gonna come off the side of the page right here. And just press, press, press. There we go. Ooh, so cute. Let's put one right here. Mm, which way do we want? We'll have them going like up like that. Oops, I just moved them a little bit. That's okay. There we go. And we'll have one coming from the top, just like that. So again, if you don't have stamps, you can make your own with leaves. Make your own. Okay, so let's do, let's try this one. It's a different, um, it's got, it's smoother. This one was kind of a furry type leaf. <laughs> This is smoother, so let's see how this one's going to react to the paint. Again, y'all, I am doing this on the fly, you know. I mean, I think I've done this before when I was young, you know, painted leaves and made our own stamps and what have you. Okay, I'm gonna move that. And then, you know, again, getting messy, messy with paint. I'm gonna try one here, see how it looks. Yeah, see, that's a little too much. But I'm gonna use this one. Ah, yes, perfect. Let's try one right here. Oh, yes, I love that. But now the paint's almost all gone. So I'm gonna go back in, add some more. Again, it's kind of exciting. You never know what you're gonna get, y'all. Never know. And just kind of mix the colors, have fun, just squish, 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 squish. I dab my brush off on the... Okay, I'm getting most, like a lot of the big clumpy paints off. And now I'm going to... Press it down. A little point there. There we go. <laughs> um, I haven't come on 
down there. And let's just do a little bit more on the other page with this one. So fun. I feel like a kid again, y'all. That's what all this art, I think, does for me. And I think that's why I enjoy it so much. It's like, I just feel like I can just get lost in it for a while. And just get messy a little bit. And okay, I'm dabbing the lot, lots of the clumpies off. <laughs> and I'm going to... one right there oh you guys could see sorry I'm trying I just did that one right there and let's see we'll do one right there I'm gonna keep this side kind of plain anyways I just wanted to carry some over okay let's see I did one of those maybe maybe a bigger one let's try this big one Okay, y'all. I'm trying to keep it out of the paint here. <laughs> and just, you could use whatever colors you want. You can mix them. Okay, now I'm going to dab off a lot of the excess paint. I would say that would be my my tip is dab it off and then go to your page. Unless you want bigger clumps. I just didn't want the big clumps. Okay, so let's see. Where should we put this one? Push it down. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I'm going to have, uh, let's see. Where do we want this one coming? Coming up maybe from here, the side right there. Oh, that is so cute. Okay, we're going to add some more. I don't know if cute is the right word, but it's cool. It's cool. I love it. Now, see, you can tell. Now I'm just getting all crazy with it. Haphazard. It's like, yeah, throw the color on there. Just have fun with it. Okay, dab it up. Put that there. And then... Uh, let's see. Maybe we'll have one coming from the bottom here. I'm lightly dabbing it because I don't want it to be crazy, crazy. Now this one I'm pressing a little harder because I know I didn't have a lot of paint on that one. Oh, I love it. <gasps> so cool. Okay, that one's going to go aside and let's try it. Let's do... Let's do one more. I'm gonna do the tips of this one, I think. Let's try it. Might as well. Get some orange. Get some of this yellow. I think I'm running out some of the colors. Okay. Dab it up. Okay. Um, let's see. Oop. That one got a little clumpy. So we are going to fix it like this. I'm going to make it look like a leaf right there coming off the side mm, don't like that one too much okay so what we're gonna do oh you know what I was gonna do something in that corner anyway so I don't even think it's gonna matter I was gonna try to dab up some of this ink and maybe make it look more of like a leaf if with another leaf yeah, that's okay okay so let me think. Let's do one more. Oops, as this gets all. <laughs> Y'all know I always make a mess. OK. 
I'm gonna rub this off because all the inks, oh, here, let me get another one. All the colors are getting kind of muddy. So I'm gonna wipe this off. Wipe my desk off. Okay. We don't want all these muddy, muddy, muddy colors. Let's get some more yellow. Some more orange. Just for this last part. And you don't need a lot, you just need like a little dab. Little dab will do ya. And it goes a long way. Okay, as you can see y'all, I've got a lot of clumps on this one, so I'm going to get it off like that. There we go. And then I'm gonna come in There we go. Love it. Love it, love it. I'm gonna put this one in the crease and see if I can get it. Yes, look at that. Go on both pages. Woohoo! Okay, that should be good. I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> now I'm going to grab a paper towel here. Kind of wash my hands as best as I can. I'm gonna do my nails later. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't do them yet. Getting ready to travel for the holidays and figured I'd do this first. And then I'll work on my, <laughs> what's left of my nails later. Okay, so then, I mean, you can do all different kinds. If you had oak leaves and all that, those would look really cool. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this because this is going to get messy. And I'll bring this to the sink later. Okay, let's clean this off. Okay, so let's dry this. Make sure I'm in camera for y'all. Okay, let's dry this. Because the next thing I wanna do is do some embossing. And if any of this is wet, the embossing powder is going to stick to this paint. So we do not want that. So we gotta get this paint dry. But look at that, I love these little prints. I love it. You can do this with pretty much anything that you find in nature. You can make your own little prints. Not even in nature. You can, you, you know, use bubble wrap, use mesh, use pantyhose, or anything with like um, a pattern on it. You can make your own little stamp. We used to do this when we were young, you know, go grab leaves and paint them. And same with potatoes, we would carve potatoes, make our own stamps with them. Oh, I love it, love it. I love how the pink and blue even play off these browns and yellows and stuff with the, with the leaves. So cool. Okay, now this, now we're gonna get even more messy, y'all, I think. <laughs> We are gonna use some embossing powder. So I've got this, um, what is this? Glitter finish, this is embossing powder. It's kind of like a copper. And I thought that, that kind of reminded me of um, fall. I've got this little leaf stamp. And then I've got these leaf stamps as well. So I don't know if you can see that. So I'm gonna, I was thinking of doing this one maybe from the corner okay and then maybe let's see so we're gonna put that one here in this corner let me see she's gonna be sitting here maybe have it on top of her so we're gonna have to glue her after we do some of these okay so let's do that one we'll do that one right now okay So this is Versamark, and I'm just doing the top part of the stamp. I'm not even using the whole stamp. I just want this top part of the stamp, and I want it to kind of be coming in from the corner down. And I'm pressing really hard. I always press hard with my stamps just because I want to make sure I get a good impression. Okay, so let's move this. Actually, now I want to put some of these on, so we might as well 
we'll have these kind of coming down. Put one there. Whoop. <laughs> There. And one there. And I'm hoping, hope, hope, hope that the impression is there. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to put this paper here. I'm going to move this box. And we are going to hope that this all works, y'all. Okay, I know there was one over there somewhere, one over here somewhere. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Okay. So let me grab a little brush. You can see where this part got. I'm just trying to get rid of that. Okay, there's one, there's one. And there's one. Cute, okay. Whew. I hold my breath every time I do that because I'm afraid <laughs> something disastrous will happen. Because I have had some disasters happen with these. Okay, let's close that up. And then we are going to emboss the fill parts right here. I don't want that line of... Okay. See, it's starting to melt. Look at that. Let's do that. Let's get this one going. And look at that. Ooh, how pretty is that, y'all? Super easy, pretty. Look at. See that? Just a couple little pieces. Just a few little, a few little ones. Okay. Then I think I wanna do a couple on this side as well. So let's see here, where did my stamp pad go? Let's do, let's see, one coming right there. Maybe one right there. I think she's gonna go here. I'm gonna have one coming out from her, so we'll just put him here. I don't know, no rhyme or reason again. We will just figure it out. Okay, so let's do this one more time. I forgot one was up here somewhere. <laughs> one was over here somewhere. And one was down here somewhere. So let's hope I got them all. Okay. Oh, there's that one. It's kind of like secret. Like where where are they? y'all can see that I'm trying to hold my book and do this at the same time okay so here's one here's two and I'm gonna brush that little piece off and then here's three I'm gonna brush this little piece off okay Woo. this is why when my husband gets home he's like what were you doing today you have glitter everywhere I'm like I know he just knows and I was crafting there's glitter throughout the whole room in different places. And I bring it with me everywhere I go. Okay. Let's do these real quick. Okay. 
And I love when they change. Cute. Okay. Easy peasy. Okay, now let's get gluing. Okay, she's gonna go here. Oh, I like that right behind her head. And she is gonna go right there. So I'm gonna glue, and then I'm gonna do something on top of her, I think. Put her right there. I like having these leaves peeking out from behind her. Okay, and then she's gonna carry over on this side. Cute. Okay, I also have, let's see, let me grab my box. Oh yeah, put that under there, hold that up. I also have these, these were, let's see, rub-on transfers from Crafter Square. So that means I got these from the dollar store, y'all. So cute, I love, love rub-on transfers. And so I'm gonna put these, I wonder if I should put this down for, yeah, I'm gonna put these down first before I emboss over them. I don't know if the heat is gonna affect these or not, but we shall see. I really like this leaf. I might actually put a few throughout, so we'll see. It's easier to cut it out because that way you're not rubbing down other things, other any of these other images. So I'm thinking this one. Maybe. Let me see. I like this leaf too. This little oak leaf. Since I didn't have any oak leaves of my own, let's put some oak leaves down. There's a big oak leaf right here too. Let me see. Got some of these little black dots. I might rub some of these on the page too, in some spots. Maybe have that coming down like that. What to do, what to do? Because I was thinking of having maybe this embossed, this stamp embossed over this with the the copper or I can do a bigger one but that's that's pretty big maybe just have that I could have that come in like this Maybe like that even, because it'll kind of, hmm, y'all help, help. I think I'm gonna do that. And then maybe do the little one over here. Okay, okay, that's our plan. So let me grab my little burnisher. So what you do on these, you take the backing off, if you can. <laughs> all my nails have torn and ripped and we were helping my son move and everything just all my stuff got destroyed all my nails <laughs> uh let's see where do we want this coming down from her like that so you just push it down and then you use your burnisher and just rub hard or kind of hard some are easier than others. Some come off easier than others. These I just got. I don't know how long they've been sitting in the dollar store, but I just bought them. So they should be pretty easy to you know rub off. Some I've had for years and they've been sitting in my drawers or you know on my shelves or what have you. And then I have a hard time, there we go, rubbing them off because they've been sitting there for so long, but they still work. Um, or if they don't, you can always cut them out like this and just glue them down like that. They don't come off your paper. So there's ways to go about it. So I'm thinking that will go there, right? Or do we want it out farther? Maybe coming out, kind of coming out from the back of her? No, no.
I'm debating y'all trying to figure out if I want it like like the stem kind of coming out from behind her shirt yeah we'll just do it like that I'm always debating I'm always second guessing myself I'm always I should just do it just do it go okay do we want to do another little one over here let's see what do we have oh, we've got this little one right here this one can kind of go right there I hope you all have a very, very blessed Thanksgiving this year. I'm not sure when this video will upload. It might be before Thanksgiving. It might be after Thanksgiving. But I am filming it before Thanksgiving because I have to travel and do a bunch of things. So I'm trying to get some things done around here before I have to leave. And I really wanted to do some of these pages. So, okay, I'm debating, y'all. Yeah, mm. just do it. Just do it. Okay, so I'm gonna get my Versamark here. And I'm going to have this one come right there. That's where it's going. I'm pressing hard. Okay. And then this one, let's pull this off. These are some cling stamps that I got, I think from, ooh, where did I get these from? I don't even remember, let me see. This was just a set of these leaf stamps. I think I got these from Tuesday morning. Oh wait, here we go. Stampendous, perfectly clear stamps. This is from Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby. Stampendous stamps. So that's where I got those from. So if those, for those of you who are wondering, that's where these leaf stamps come from. I think I'm going to have them just come out like this. Have a little bit come out like that. I don't know. We'll see how it looks. Who knows? Can't tell with these clear Versa marks. Okay. Whew. Okay, where's my paper again? Move this box. Step by step by step. Okay, here we go. This was over here somewhere, right? Okay, it looks like it's just a little faded in some spots but that's okay and then this one we're gonna put right there and push it down and then I do not want it on her face or here I want it to come out from behind her so anytime your embossing pieces are places that you don't want them to be. You can just take a little brush and rub it off before you heat it up. Easy peasy, just like that. All right, so then we're gonna save that. Move that, close this. Throw that on the floor. <laughs> And let's heat this up.
Okay, can you all see that? See the, where the, there we go. See where the embossing was right there and right there. Okay, so now all we got left is the title, y'all. And I was gonna put Fall for Jesus. Look how pretty, oh, I love it, love it. Again, it didn't turn out the way I was expecting it to or thinking how I wanted it to, but again, it's turning out, I guess, maybe even better. I don't know. It's just different. It's not better or worse. It's just different. I had all these ideas of how I was going to have this go, but, you know, you never know. Okay, so I had this bag of these little letters. I do not know where I got these from, y'all. It was in a bag like this, so probably a garage sale. Somebody stashed it. They got rid of and um, I was looking for an A. There was no A, but there's this G. So I'm going to do fall for Jesus here. And so I'm going to cut this G into an A. I'm always jerry-rigging letters. But you can do that. See, look, now I got an A. Just like that. Actually, I'm going to cut this a little bit shorter. But you can always do that with your letters. So we're going to do fall for me. And I think these are stickers. If not, I'll just glue them. It looked like they had some backing on them at one point. But maybe... Oh, wait. There we go. Yep. They're stickers. So we're going to do a fall for Jesus. And the only um, ones I had were the fall. So I'm going to do the for Jesus with some other stickers that I have. Is that straight? Is that straight, y'all? Can you see? Am I in camera? <laughs> I haven't even checked lately. I'm so focused on this. Let's see. In camera? Yes, kind of in camera. A little wonky, but we're okay. Okay, fall. Kind of, let me move this A for some reason. It's kind of... fall and then I had these little brown stickers and there's a four right here so I'm just going to use this fall four I hope I have all the letters J E S U S okay got it so I'm going to work backwards because I want the Jesus to end right about here. S-U-S. -S. So here's the U. So anytime you want your word to end somewhere, work backwards. If you're doing stickers or something. J-E-S-U-S. -S. It's harder to spell backwards though. At least for me. Okay, and now I am seeing I need to lower this because it's going to run into the four. So gently lift your stickers up and just shift them down a little. J E. I don't know where what these letters are. Pathways by Michelle Anderson. Look, 2002, y'all. I've had these since 2002. Holy moly. That is how long I've had some of my stuff. I probably had some of my stuff even longer than that. I've been scrapbooking forever now. And so I've had some of this stuff for years. Years, I tell you. When I say years, I'm not joking. That's almost 20 years ago. Because we're almost in 2022, y'all. Craziness. Fall for Jesus. And then, let's see, do I have numbers? Yes, I do, but these are kind of big. I don't know if I want to put those big, big numbers. I might just do a date stamp right here. 
and brown. Ooh, or I can do the date stamp in the Versamark and then emboss it. So it'll be this, I might do that right here along the side or, I don't know. I'll have to think about that, fool around about that. Ooh, I also have these hearts. Uh, let's see, do I want the heart? Maybe right there, or do I want this heart? Or do we want both hearts? We can do like a... Uh, I like that heart. I'm gonna use that heart. So, fall for Jesus. a little heart so make sure that you are going for the true god not these false gods and not worshiping things that you shouldn't be worshiping or putting things above jesus that you know that, that's taking the place of jesus so thank you all so so much for joining me here's the page let me bring it up close here's the top bottom here's the other side and again we are in acts 14 verses 8 through 18 but the one that i'm really focusing on is let's see verses 15 through 17 it says um he, there, remember, Paul and Barnabas were telling the people, turn from the vain things to a living God who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. In the past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Yet he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good by giving you the rains from heaven and the fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. So y'all, I hope that your hearts are satisfied this Thanksgiving season with food and with gladness. And just know that all good gifts come from our Father in heaven. And I hope that you all fall even stronger in love with Jesus this season. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I love y'all. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Have a very blessed holiday season. I'll see you next time. Bye y'all.